Hello, welcome back to the studio. We are in the middle of making this basket and we did the base in video one of this series. Check the description below for that. Also the blog post that corresponds to this series. I have all the resources, tools, materials, and videos in the series all linked in that post. So be sure to check that out description below as well. Hey, I wanted to jump in here and tell you about my basket a month club subscription program. You sign up and for 12 months, Months, I will send you video and written instructional information on how to weave different baskets. So 12 baskets, you learn all the techniques from beginner basketry techniques, expanding into more advanced techniques over the course of 12 months. So each month you'll receive an email with a video tutorial, full comprehensive information on how to weave that month's basket, as well as a photo filled instructional manual. So it's a great way to get started in basketry. If you're enjoying this series, I suggest checking that out. You can find the information in the description below. I have all of the details on my website, textileindy.com, and you can join me there. Now back to the basket. For this video, we're going to start weaving the walls and I wanted to do some twill weave. So we'll start incorporating twill weave into this basket to build the walls of the basket. And I wanted to play with color. So I pulled out some random scraps of color reed. I have some fun navies, purples, greens, and this sort of grayish sea foamy bleached reed. So I'm going to incorporate that randomly. You can do stripes, do one color, kind of play around with the coloration that you want to do with. I'm gonna do it a little bit randomly and see what happens. So let's get started with that. Now for this base, I am going to end the base and start the weaving because as I was weaving this, I wove it so that it's for a right-hand dominant person. If you are left-handed, you're gonna weave opposite the way I do. So just keep that in mind. You can situate yourself so that it is most comfortable for you. Now to finish off the base, I'm going to find the spot where I started, which is right over here, this little end, I'll lift up this stake, the little end that's sticking out in here, that's where I started. So I'm going to weave around to that point. And that means that my rows won't be perfectly even visually, but I will have an even number of row total. So my ends right here, I'm going to end this row or this weaver on the spoke before where I started. So I started on this spoke here, I'm going to end on this spoke here by just cutting this two spokes in length. And I lost it. So I'm gonna reweave this and clamp it to the, this spoke here so that it holds it in place. So in the previous video, I was showing you weaving from the inside of the basket so that you could see the inside. The outside is actually this side, the side where that first set of spokes shows and the second set is kind of hidden inside. So I'm gonna tilt this onto its edge. And before we do anything, make sure to get your base damp. So you want this whole thing nice and damp. If it dried since the last time you worked on it, we want to get it nice and wet so it doesn't crack as we work. So get it damp, damp, damp. Pick a color that you're going to start weaving with. You can also do this with the natural reed if you wish. And flip over your basket so you're looking at the outside of the basket. And I'm going to start weaving from the outside with this flat on the table so that I can show you the pattern to start out with. And then we can lift it up on its side to weave from there or do whatever is comfortable. I'm gonna start this weaver to the outside of a spoke where the previous row was behind. And now I'm going to go behind one spoke over two behind one. So the pattern is behind one over two behind one over two behind one. Don't look at the previous row as reference. We're doing a twill pattern. So it's going to be completely different than the plain weave that we did for the base. So just focus on this row. And once we go one row around, it will have established, established the pattern and we can base off previous rows from there. So over two here, under one, over two here, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one. Rotate the basket around, over two, under one, 
over two, under one. I'm gonna move this clamp over two. And here, where this overlap is, I'm actually gonna go over three. So over this, these three spokes, and then under one, and back to over two. So around the basket, we're gonna weave over two, under one, until we come to that three spoke stair step. And we'll do a three spoke stair step each time we come around the basket. And I'll show you that again. I'm rotating around going over two, under one, all the way around until I come back to this point. And now my over three was right here. I'm gonna shift that one spoke to the right. So here, these three, we're gonna shift that over one spoke and go over these three here. So it's these three on this first row, these three on that second row, and then go under one and then over two, under one, just like we have been doing. Now here, in order to start getting a curve in the wall, I'm going to set this up on its side and start curving in to get a rounded shape for my basket. So again, you can see the over two, under one pattern forming. Over two, under one. Clip your end when you come to that point. Pick a new color of reed to work with and get it damp. You always wanna get your reed damp before working with it. That makes it pliable so that it won't crack as you weave. So now to splice, we're going to back it up four spokes, but here, because we have a two, the, the twill, we're actually gonna go over five spokes. So I'm gonna tuck it under this fifth spoke over, covering up that previous row and hiding both ends, one end behind here and one end here. And now clamp that in place. And I have my three spoke overlap here. So I'll do that and then go back to my two to one twill over two behind one. When you get to the starting point, you can remove the clamp and keep weaving from there. Make sure as you go around, don't miss the over three under one stair step. As you work around the basket, it will show up regularly each turn around the basket. So if you find yourself being off pattern, you probably skipped that point. So go ahead and double check, catch that, and then you can move on. Now, I'm already out of read. These are shorter pieces, so I'm gonna splice in a new piece. The great thing about a continuous weave basket like this is that it's a great project to use up bits and pieces and scraps, especially the scraps of color read that you have left over from other projects. So you can do confetti style baskets. I call them scrappy baskets when you're just playing around with leftovers in the studio, in your studio. Whether that studio is actually a room or just a corner of your dining room table, it's still your creative space. And you'll notice that as you weave around your basket, it will start to create a kind of natural shape as you have it propped up on its side like this. If you want to dictate the shape, you can loosen up by pressing from the inside of the basket. That will extend the stakes or the spokes outwards. I do suggest doing this anyways to get your rows packed down and closer together. They want to move up the spokes up until we finally have them packed down and the rim on to hold things in place. So press in here anyway, but you can extend it out by, by weaving from the inside and pressing out on the spokes if you want more of a bowl shape uh, or a plate. If you want more of a curve, you can start to set it on its side and press in from the side, and that will begin to bring the spokes inwards. So tension and ease play, you play around with that and see how that impacts the shape of your basket. 
I'm going to switch to a green piece. This is a small piece here, so we'll see how far it goes. For kicks and giggles, I'm going to start dramatically pulling in the basket to get more of a curved in base shape. You can continue the walls straight up by just maintaining the tension and setting it on its side and just weaving with a bit of looseness and that will maintain the shape. But I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna pull on my weaver just a bit as I work. And this begins to pull the spokes inward and change the shape just a touch. And again, my reed is just scrap dyed reed, so I'm just pulling different lengths. This is not an organized pattern. I'm just pulling in color as I go, as I run out of length, and splicing it right on top of that previous weaver. So as I'm weaving, each time I go behind a spoke, I'm pulling on my weaver just a bit to add some tension and start to pull in the spokes. And this is where you will probably want to add a clamp each time you go to splice so that the tension that you're creating doesn't loosen out as you change color. Again, this basket is great for short scrappy pieces because you can splice it in and use up those bits and pieces of length without having to compost them or throw them away. It does mean more splicing, but if you get a basket out of it, it's better than throwing the material away. 
basket reed is not cheap. You can see the twill pattern forming around the basket, the stair step here all the way around. And the three spoke stair step here is a little bit longer. So that's a little more pronounced around the basket. But all of these random colors creating a very unique colorway. I'm going to incorporate this new weaver and I'm continuing to pull on the weaver as I go to get a more dramatic curve in. When I'm weaving personal baskets, I typically don't go with color because it really changes the look of the basket when you play with color. And it puts it in a space and time. I feel like baskets by themselves in their natural form, form are more of a natural looking piece. They, they have the natural reed color and they look more natural. <laughs> when you add color, you start to add a time frame to them. What color is popular or what color theme are you doing in your house or things like that. So typically I like to stick with the natural tone of the reed because it's nice and neutral and it fits well with a lot of things. It looks good with dark wood and lighter wood accents or furniture pieces. 
it can kind of blend in if you want it to. But playing with color sometimes is fun just to either experiment with different combinations or have an accent piece that you can display in your home. Color adds an element to the design aspect of a basket as well. Just like any piece, color is one of those elements to consider. Okay, I'm coming up to the top. I need about two inches to finish off the rim. So I'll weave until I have that much length left. You can do the same. Weave until you have two inches of spoke here left on your basket. And now at the very top here, I'll do a few more rows so that it just stays straight up rather than pulling in anymore to create more of a fluted shape, not out, but straight up.
And now I'm at the top of my basket. I need to stop here to have enough spoke to do the final step. So find the place where you started the walls of the basket, not the base, but the walls, and go up that spoke. And on that spoke, that's where you're going to cut this last weaver and leave that end sitting on top like so. Now to prep this basket for the rim, we need to do cut and tuck but I'm going to share that in the next video, so come back next week. But before we go, a few notes on the shape of your basket. This reed is malleable until it dries. So if you want to come in and do some molding, you can press on the inside and the outside to start to shape it. You can rotate back and forth to get it to recenter. If you find that your basket is heavier on one side than the other, you can kind of press that out press on the bottom to even it out and reshape it a little bit. You can roll it around to even out the weavers. If you notice that there are some that are sticking out more, you can press on the sides. You can play around with the shape by just fiddling around with it, pressing on it and rotating it to get it to the shape that you want it to a certain extent. Obviously, I can't turn this into a square basket at this point because I started out round and it's a round basket, but I can even out the weavers and get the neck a little bit tighter here and just overall I'd make adjustments to the basic shape by coming in and pressing on rows and making sure it sits the way I want it to. Thanks for joining me in weaving the walls of your basket. Be sure to check the description below for the blog post with all the resources, tools, and materials. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.